Life sometimes throws you a curveball out of nowhere. It seems innocent at first until it hits you right in the face, as innocent as a little five-year-old crying his heart out. This is what happened to me four weeks ago. David, my husband, our two children and I were at a barbecue on a bright, sunny Saturday in August. I was alone in the kitchen, preparing pasta salad. Margaret, the landlady, was outside with the other wives and husbands. Samuel, our little boy of five years old, came running, rushed to me, and began to cry. He tried to say something, but he couldn't hold back his sobs, and I didn't understand a word. Okay, slow down, honey. Take a deep breath and tell me why you're crying. Gathering all his courage, sniffing, breathing heavily, he followed my advice. I don't want Dad to get rid of the mustache, Mom. I don't want a new cat. I love the mustache, he said. Why do you say that, Sam? We don't want to replace whiskers with a new cat. Why do you think so? Because Dad told it to Uncle John, he finally said. I hugged him. You probably didn't understand well what Dad was saying. We won't get rid of the mustache. Now, Sam, forget about it and go back outside to play with the other children, I reassured Sam. Sam looked at me. Are you sure, Mom? Will we keep the mustache? Yes, I'm sure. Clearly relieved, he ran outside. Well, that was strange. Whiskers is my old 15-year-old cat. I had it before I even met David. My name is Sheila Roberts, formerly O'Brien. I met David 10 years ago. He was 25 years old and I was 23. We hit it off straight away and it all led to us getting married two years later. A year later, I became pregnant and we had our first child, Annika, who is now seven years old. Two years later, I gave birth to Samuel. I know the mustache is nearing its end. He's a little blind now and has a hard time holding his litter, but he's still very lively and eating well. David and I discussed this topic several times and even began to prepare the children for the fact that he did not have many years to live, but we were far from making a decision. I will, of course, talk to him about this. It wasn't until we left the barbecue and headed home that I remembered what Samuel had said. Dear, why did you say that you want to get rid of the cat and get a new one? It really traumatized Samuel, I said. For a split second, a strange expression appeared on David's face. Surprise, shock. I wasn't sure. He looked at Samuel in the back seat. I didn't say anything like that. Let's talk about this later, when the kids go to bed, he finally answered. Well, when we got home, I had to wake up Samuel, who was very tired and in a bad mood. Bath time was a real struggle, as it often is between kids and me. David and I were exhausted, too, and soon we went to bed, and I forgot about mustache. And then a week ago, it was our turn to host our friends for a barbecue. I was in the kitchen when I really needed to go to the bathroom. The window was open, letting in fresh air as well as all the noise from the backyard. I could clearly hear John talking to David, even if I couldn't see them from the bathroom. Oh, you sneaky bastard, said John. I didn't think you had the guts to bring a new pussy into the house while your wife was away. Shut up, John. You're going to get me into trouble. If Sheila ever finds out, I'm dead, David replied. So everything is ready for the long Labor Day weekend, when she takes the kids to see Mom and Dad. John, I said shut the fuck up. Okay, cunning dog. I was in a daze. I tried to sit on the toilet, but the seat was raised and I sat properly on the toilet. I straightened up, lowered the seat, and sat there for several minutes. My world was crumbling around me. I clearly remembered what Samuel had overheard a few weeks ago, and suddenly I understood the true meaning. The old pussy was me, and he will come with a new one. I couldn't understand. I refused to understand. Our life was almost perfect. We both had jobs we loved. Two wonderful children, a nice home, and wonderful friends. At 34, I was very pretty, and our sex life was more than satisfactory. So why did he decide to leave me for a younger woman? Why risk losing everything to try a new girl? Try as I might, I could not find anything in David's behavior that would shed any light on his dissatisfaction with me. He does everything he can to express his love for me, his joy that I am his wife, mother, and friend, and I always respond with the same love. Could I have misinterpreted what I heard? No, John is a little rough around the edges with his vocabulary. 
When he says pussy, he means everything below the girl's waist. My marriage is over. I started crying. There is no way I can continue living with this bastard. But how could I continue? What should I do? Should I go and confront him in front of everyone? This will not work. From what they said, it will be done over the long weekend. I needed proof of his deception. It doesn't get any easier than this. A colleague's husband works for a security agency and could install cameras in the house to catch him. Yes, that's exactly what I'll do. And then, having evidence of his deception, I will throw him out into the street and squeeze as much out of him as the court will allow. The hardest part will be living with him for the next week without letting him suspect that something is wrong. I wiped my eyes, reapplied my ruined makeup, and went outside to chat with the guests. The next week was terrible. I couldn't be very loving towards David. Every time the two-faced son of a bitch tried to be nice and loving and caring, I had to fight myself not to just wipe the fucking smile off his face. Finally, Friday came, and I went with the children to my parents. When my mother saw me, she realized that something was wrong. She insisted that I tell her what happened, guessing that it was something between me and David. An hour later, when the kids were in the basement with my dad playing Xbox on the old TV, I spilled everything to my mom and my little sister, Natalie. They were as surprised as I was to learn of David's insidious behavior. No words could ease the pain I felt, but it was nice to know that I could rely on them, that I could count on them to help me. On Saturday night, Natalie invited me to come over for a drink. It was a pub with live entertainment. It would be great to just get drunk and forget that at that very moment, my future ex who spanned is cheating on me with some chick. Glass of wine after glass, my mood did not improve, but the burning pain slowly disappeared. All of Natalia's friends were much younger than me, but they made pleasant and funny company, although a little wild for my taste. Now they all knew that I had family problems and tried their best to make me feel better. Soon I was constantly on the dance floor. Two young men, Steve and Brad, were especially attentive to my mood, dancing with me and telling me soothing things like, what a fool your husband is, and if I were him, I'd do anything to keep you. I soon realized that they were mostly trying to take advantage of my suffering, but I didn't care. If my son of a bitch husband could play, then so could I. I know that I am an attractive woman, and the obvious behavior of these two children, not many years removed from adolescence, confirms this fact. On Sunday, I will deal the final blow to these lies about marriage, but not without an explosion. Towards the end of the evening, towards the last call, I slowly danced with Steve. I pressed my whole body against him and felt something move below his waist. That's what I said. You are a very beautiful woman, Sheila. I don't know yet what your husband will lose when you leave him, but I can't wait to find out tonight if you let me, Steve whispered in my ear. In the next seconds, a stream of conflicting feelings and thoughts flashed through my head. My natural reserve towards other men has been at the forefront since I met David. Two wrongs don't make it right, my mind screamed at me. Feelings ultimately triumphed over intellect. This is the first day of my new life, and there is nothing I would like more than to have sex with you, I finally said. He reacted quickly. A few minutes later, I grabbed my purse and we left toward Steve's apartment. As soon as the door closed, we began to take off our clothes. Steve tried to take me to his bedroom, but I attacked him on the couch and we started having sex. He was younger and hotter, which made me wildly delighted. Suddenly, I heard the keys turn in the lock, and Brad appeared in the doorway. When he saw us, naked on the couch, he smiled. Having closed the door, he stood and looked at us. A crazy thought came into my head, and I immediately took action. I motioned with my finger for Brad to come closer. Boys, have you ever done this in threes? Everyone unanimously accepted my proposal. I've never been very loud in my lovemaking. But I didn't make love. I took revenge on my traitor husband. I asked the guys to turn on the video recording on my smartphone to capture every breath every second of my revenge, so that he could see that I took double revenge for his betrayal. Steve turned on the camera, and we began the process of revenge. Soon, 
two young guys scored a goal against me, and in the morning, with a hangover, I returned to my mother's house. I went home straight after dinner my mother cooked on Sunday. I didn't call David to tell him I'd be back a day early. I didn't mind surprising him with his girl. When I parked in the garage, I was surprised to find that David's car was not there. Was he hanging out with his new girlfriend? It didn't matter. Someone from the security agency will give me all the records on Monday. Mustache was the only one who greeted us. I hope the bastard didn't leave it on all weekend. After sending the kids downstairs to the playroom, I connected my digital camera to the TV. I was ready to give David a good show. Around 10 p.m., I finally heard his car drive up to the house. The garage door was closed and all the lights were on as he had left them. I stood in the kitchen and waited for him and his girlfriend to enter. I was a little confused when I saw that he was all alone. He was carrying a cardboard box. He was completely surprised to see me. Honey, is something wrong? Are the children sick? You weren't supposed to be back until tomorrow afternoon. David asked with a concerned look on his face. Although his anxiety was just beginning, his girlfriend will probably be here soon. I know everything, David. I overheard your conversation with John last week. The cat is already out of the bag, I said, acid and ice mixed in my tone. He lowered his eyes, guilt written all over his face. I'm so sorry, dear. I should have been honest with you. I don't know why I kept this a secret. I knew that after so many years together, you would feel bad about this, he said in a whisper. But I did all this for the children, so that the shock would not be so great. Now he has me stumped. How will sex with another woman help our children cope with our divorce? It didn't make any sense. Before I could answer, the children ran upstairs and rushed at their father so that he almost dropped the box. Suddenly, a faint meow came from the box, surprising the children and me. David carefully placed the box on the floor and opened the doors. Two small heads appeared, looking at the children. This is for you, children, said David. Two little cats, one for each of you. I suddenly felt sick. My stomach wanted to empty itself right here in the kitchen. David looked at me. Sorry, Sheila. The last time I went to the vet, he said Usa didn't have long to live. Then I decided to get these two kittens to help the children cope with this. He took a couple of bottles of beer out of the refrigerator and turned to me. Let's go to the living room while the children get acquainted with the kittens. Curious what's on TV? Oh, crap, I said. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.